Hello, everyone. Welcome to Briggs Youth Chat. I'm Xia Wen in Beijing. In today's episode, I'm joined by three of my colleagues, and we're going to discuss the ongoing Briggs Summit that's happening from August 22nd to 24th in Johannesburg, South Africa. The theme of this year's summit is BRICS and Africa. It's reported that over 40 heads of state and government are participating in the meeting, making it one of the largest gatherings of leaders from the global south in recent times. So what's the significance of the summit and why do we see more and more countries lining up to join the bloc? What opportunities will BRICS offer to Africa as well as the global south, especially to the young people? So before we delve into these questions and more, let's firstly welcome my colleagues and see what their focuses are on the summit. So we have Ms. Pearl Butelezi, she's from South Africa. We have Konstantin Shipeng, he's from uh, Russia, as well as my colleague uh, Huang Jiyuan, he's from China. So first of all, guys, why don't you give our audiences a brief introduction of yourself, as well as what are your observations on the summit so far? Well, yes, as you've just said, I'm Pro Butelezi or Zanele Butelezi. I'm from South Africa and I've been here in China for almost, oh, well, just over five years. And uh, what I'm looking forward to in uh, these discussions that are about to start in South Africa is the topic of expansion, BRICS expansion, uh, because there's, a, there's been a lot of talk in the build up to this summit. And so I'm interested to see who gets in and uh, who will, who will get their entrance, uh, entry into this block delayed. I'm also looking forward to discussions as to how we strengthen trade among uh, member countries, as well as those who are interested in joining but won't be joining this time around, because that's the main focus of BRICS, to promote global uh, economic development. And these countries that are coming together, these are countries that are needing that uh, development when it comes to e the economy and are worst affected by what is happening right now in terms of uh, Economy, the economic crisis that is plaguing the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I noticed that, Constantine, you have been nodding your head while Pearl was giving her points. So. Right, I totally <laughs> agree with, with what Pearl said, but um, uh, I think uh, I'd like to expand the topics that uh, the BRICS countries are going to discuss in South Africa. High on the agenda is a topic of de-dollarization of uh, the economic cooperation uh, within the framework of BRICS. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're probably going to see is the discussions of, uh, you know, um, using the national currencies or maybe just uh, even, uh, you know, working out the e-currency for the BRICS countries. Uh, it is very, uh, you know, important. This topic is indeed very important for Russia because, uh, as we know, uh, Russia and China are well ahead in that process. Right now, the senior Russian trade is serviced uh, in national currencies for more than 80%. Uh, and it feels this kind of de-dollarization feels very secure on one hand. Mm. But on the other hand, we feel the lack of financial infrastructure. So that's a very important topic to be discussed within the framework of BRICS. Also, we, uh, you know, Obviously, BRICS is going, have been, and is still going beyond the just the sphere of economic cooperation. So there are, will, uh, there will be another multiple, multiple topics of the discussions. The one I, I gotta check into uh, during the summit is the promotion of the so-called media diplomacy. Media uh, diplomacy. Yeah, uh, our media, BRICS media, are gonna talk a lot. There will be a lot of events uh, concerning that question about strengthening the media uh, cooperation, strengthening the uh, over overall voice of BRICS on the uh, you know, globally, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's also something to look into, as I said. Yeah, as you said, the dollarization, BRICS expansion, as well as media diplomacy exactly. remain some of the um, uh, like topics attract you the most? Yeah, I think my colleague will uh, will expand these topics further. Well, I'm really here just for the tourist tips and food <laughs> tips. I've <laughs> never been to South Africa before, so I'm kind of looking forward to visit sometimes. And just to echo what my colleague has said, I think, yeah, the dollarization will be a top priority in the uh, this year's summit. But of, of course, we have to face the fact that there are some difficulties there. Mm. Not only is dollar still the dominant currency in the, in, in the world, and also, you know, people have always said that dollar is backed by the US military power. So 
how do we make sure that the BRICS currency have enough of a force, whether it's political, economic, or military perhaps, to strengthen its um, foundation. So I think, yeah, we're going to have to delve into that. And I do think it's a long process before we can Indeed. finally see the currency be put out there. Yeah, Indeed. well, those are all very great opinions. I mean, great uh, talking points we're going to delve more into during the uh, show. But before that, uh, we know the theme of this year's summit is BRICS and Africa. So Pearl, since you're from South Africa, what does that mean for your countries to host the summit? What's the significance um, for African countries to embrace this summit? Well, what we are seeing here is the spotlight that's been shown on to Africa as well as South Africa. And uh, it means that we'll have issues that um, concern African countries being center stage of the discussions that will be taking place uh, down in Johannesburg, South Africa. And so for a long time, African countries have felt that they've been left behind by many developed countries in every discussion that takes place. Um, the Global South has had to fight for their issues to be heard uh, when it comes to climate change. We saw in Egypt, uh, with the climate discussions that were happening, the UN climate discussions that were happening, there's still issues of uh, financing uh, the transition from uh, um, from coal or fossil fuel fossil fuels to um, to um, to clean energy. There's still a fight there where, where as to where this financing is going to come from. You also go to other platforms, multilateral platforms, there's still a, a, a fight for African countries to make their voices heard. And so now this is the opportunity for South Africa to lift its voice or in terms of what it needs to see come out of, this, of these discussions. Because South Africa is also a country that is facing a lot of, uh, I guess, challenges when it comes to the economy, most importantly, uh, as well as unemployment which is a huge uh, issue. And so when, when we have these discussions as a BRIC nation, uh, BRICS nations, we need to come up with resolutions as well as ideas that will support the development uh, of uh, these countries, smaller countries or developing countries, as well as you know, create opportunities, come up with ideas that will foster new opportunities that will create jobs for our young uh, um, uh, unemployed youth because South Africa as well as South Africa um, we are a very young uh, nation we are a very mm. young continent as well as a young nation as, in terms of South Africa I mean the average age in Africa is 25 years old mm. um, so we need to have those young people occupied in terms of jobs and, and and ensure that we build up our nations so that we don't get what is happening in uh, in the, in uh, West Africa where we are seeing a lot of uh, young people rising up and uh, opening up a space for coups to take place because people are frustrated. They are sick and tired of uh, living in poverty and so they are trying new things. They are uh, supporting people that they feel will bring them change. We don't know that uh, cues actually do bring change, changes or not, but uh, this is what we are seeing developing. And uh, hopefully the discussions in uh, South Africa will come up with ideas that actually uh, give people alternatives in terms of, uh, I guess, uh, good ideas that will take us to the path of development as well as democracy that uh, many countries yearn for. Mm. I, I catch one uh, key word Pearl just said, alternative, because this is one of the very frequent, frequently appeared word when I was doing research about the BRICS summit. Um, also, like last week when I was speaking to a few uh, scholars from South Africa, they also came up with this word, alternative. And they said the BRICS summit plays an, offers another alternative platform for the developing countries and emerging markets um, to unite together, to strengthen their voice that has been neglected for far too long uh, in a, uh, on the international stage. They said uh, through BRICS platform, country, they can really be there and uh, create this uh, fairer and uh, more inclusive uh, organization that could benefit all. So I'd like to hear what are your thoughts on this, Constantine? Well, uh, what, uh, I totally would like to agree with uh, what you just said. Uh, and basically, what, what you've just been talking about is exactly why BRICS 
uh, as uh, well, we can't, uh, can't call it a, an organization, right? But uh, BRICS as a platform, probably BRICS as a club, is uh, so attractive to a lot of uh, developing countries. Why? Because uh, basically a lot of developing countries are just uh, tired of Western style uh, way to deal with the international relations. They are tired of, uh, I don't know, Washington-led economic coercion. They are tired of uh, Cold War mentality when two blocks are fighting each other. They are tired of psychology of you're either with us or you're against us. Mm. They want an alternative. They want to have choice. They want to choose their partners. They don't want to be coerced into cooperation or submission by somebody, you know, from behind the ocean. Mm. You know? So uh, that's why BRICS, with its values of, you know, mutual respect, mutual benefit, a dialogue exchange, uh, the BRICS as the platform gives the developing countries that choice. And it's been given this choice not, not just today or yesterday. This, uh, this process has been ongoing. For example, it's very symbolic that it was exactly 10 years ago during the BRICS summit in South Africa, in Durban, that the first, uh, so to say, platform, the first mechanism of further BRICS expansion was settled. It was 10 years ago. This mechanism was called outreach which meant that the BRICS countries are uh, basically proclaiming that they are not the exclusive club, mm. that they are ready to cooperate with any country that is interested to do that. They are ready to give them choices. They are, re uh, they are ready to, you know, mutually, uh, to, to build up the mutually beneficial relations. And that's what exactly 10 years ago, this process started. Now we're on the finish line, we're approaching the finish yes. line. Exactly uh, 10 years later, this summit in South Africa again, we're going to you know, work out pro probably the procedure right, of, of further expanding the BRICS. So everything looks very logical to me in this 10 year long process. Mm. And uh, I mean, some people might also be raising questions about, oh, maybe Russia is trying to do this through this process, or maybe China is trying to do some nefarious, nefarious things about, through this pro process, forgetting that the relationship between Africa and all these other countries, uh, whether it's China or Russia or Brazil or India, dates back a long, many, many years. And uh, so this is just a continuation of that uh, engagement between these countries. And now we are seeing countries that are coming from South America, as well as the Middle East, uh, that are also wishing to join this, uh, this club mm. or this block. But uh, China, I mean, if you look at the theme, you mentioned BRICS and Africa, it's nothing new. China and uh, Russia, as well as uh, India and Brazil, they've always been close to African countries, as well as South Africa. South Africa has a, a very long history, uh, especially during uh, the liberation struggle, uh, when we're still under uh, apartheid uh, uh, government, mm. and uh, our, many of our, uh, I guess, uh, liberation fighters went abroad uh, in exile. They got support from uh, countries like Russia, as well as uh, China, uh, Brazil, and, and Cuba, which has expressed interest in joining, or has applied, actually, to join uh, BRICS. So this is a continuation of strengthening this relationship between these countries. And uh, this is very encouraging, because many of these countries, as I said earlier, uh, many of, uh, of their people, the populations in these countries, are struggling, and they're looking for answers to ending poverty that is plaguing them, as well as unemployment. And uh, BRICS is promising that. I mean, it's in their, I, I guess, their motto and the, the words that have been uh, spoken over and over by leaders that, you know, we are here for peace, we are here for security, and we are here for cooperation. And so everyone wants a piece of that. Who doesn't want peace in their country? Who doesn't want development as well as, you know, cooperation, living in peace with your fellow men and fellow women. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we are hoping to see being strengthened in these discussions that will take place in Johannesburg. Hopefully bigger and better things will come out of the talks. Yeah, yes. And I think one of the attractiveness of BRICS is that like Pearl said, it's that continuous engagement between countries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I read an article, I think this 
morning that makes the equivalent between BRICS and the G7. I think that's one of the most frequent um, equivalents made. But there is a fundamental difference between these two. I mean, G7 is a very closed off set club. And BRICS is always opening, trying to engage more people, trying to expand itself. I mean, the fact that there's no set structure of this platform, as Constantin said, it uh, opens up opportunities and it allows this platform to keep evolve, evolving. Mm. But when you look at G G7, you know, these organizations have a very set structure. And if we're really talking about the political part of it, it's really led by one country, which is the United States, because economically they are all intertwined. And the fact is they are all linked together by security packs. You, you have you, the United Indo States is supporting yeah. the Japan with a defense pact. Then there's NATO, which groups together all the rest. Uh -huh. So I think that's fundamentally different from BRICS. And that's why I think uh, the BRICS expansion, it's always being talked about, is that that BRICS expansion is welcoming a lot of difference in there. It's engaging people. It might not, it might not be that fast of a process. Like you said, it takes 10 years to just set out mm. uh, the procedure. So, but it's, it keeps evolving, keeps going. So I think that's why people are, more and more people are looking to BRICS for, for future. It.